guys and welcome back to my channel so in today's video you are going to get ready with me um i'm just going to put on some makeup after a very long time the other day i was just telling deepak how um i started liking the process of putting on makeup again so lately whenever i'm going out with deepak or even for my doctor's appointment i make sure to look nice and put on some uh, makeup but uh, yeah bangalore is really cold thus this jacket but also deepak and i have been so sick from past two days that um if i sound a little nasally it's because i had sinus so let's start also this will be a chit chat get ready with me i'm just going to talk with you guys and just have fun okay so to wash my face i used the derma weaves hydra cleanser this has natural colloidal and oatmeal it is the same product but they've changed the packaging and i really like the packaging of this i go through these um face washes very quickly because i not only use this for my face i also use this for my belly and uh, you will see why i do that in my belly routine but um, it's the same product it's a very natural cleanser it does not strip off the moisture uh, but it does a very good job at cleaning your skin and that's why i really like it and as usual on my face i'm going to use the neutroderms vitamin e um lotion because i've been using this for a very long time i really like it and it does not feel heavy on my skin and my skin has been extremely um dry ever since i got pregnant it can also be because of dehydration but this helps hydrate my skin without sitting heavy on my skin and it has vitamin e in it so it also helps repair your skin so let me just clip my hair behind if i'm looking down it's because i have my mirror here but um yeah whenever i have to order these for myself i have to order some for my brothers also because um they've started using this way back like before my marriage and stuff and they really like it so they constantly finish it but uh let me know if anyone else has had this issue of extremely dry skin I'm just going to let this sit on my skin for some time. Next for my neck and the chest area, I'm using this Derma Weaves moisturizing lotion um uh, for dry skin condition. It has sativa seed powder in it. Now the reason I use this is because it's very soothing. And if I do not do this step, if I forget to do this, throughout the day my skin just keeps getting drier and drier and um I start feeling really itchy. so i have to do this i can't miss this step at all and it really helps soothe my skin so i make sure to always apply this obviously uh, on camera i'm just doing it on my neck and chest but generally i apply it everywhere else because as your belly is stretching your breast is also stretching and uh, it's important to moisturize that area as well because you don't want to get stretch marks and more than stretch marks it's just this very irritating um itchiness that doesn't go away so that's why i make sure to do this and this soaks into your skin so easily that whatever you wear after this you know it doesn't transfer to your clothes and that's why i like using this in the other areas Okay so let's move on to the video. Um the other day I went home and got all of my makeup and came but um I would say 80% of my things are still in my brother's house and I think they like it that way because it makes them feel like I am still at home and I haven't just left home and gone and um I've also left it like that. Now whatever products I use will be mentioned in the description box so you don't have to um worry about finding it. but uh, now i'm just going to use some primer on my t zone 
I feel like pregnancy skin is just the most weirdest type because on some days you wake up and your skin feels extremely oily and some days you wake up and it feels so dry. It's just so confusing. And that's why I like using products that I know work well for dry or oily skin. Anyways, now coming back to the topic. Not coming back. I think I'm starting the topic right now. I'm sorry, pregnancy brain. But the other day I was watching a reel about, you know, it was one of those inspirational reels where this girl talks about dealing with things all alone because you feel like, um, you know, you have an image to um, maintain to people. And when I was watching that, I swear I felt like she was just talking about me because it was so relatable. So what had happened is I was just diagnosed with endometriosis that time. And um, endometriosis was a very, very new um, chronic illness for me. I had never heard of it before. I had never um, met anyone who went through it. I never knew anyone who was who was aware of it also. So when um, this happened to me, it happened to me when I was 25, when, you know, at 25, you are just at your peak. I don't know. I feel like 25 is that age everyone wants to be at. So you're at that age. And for me, I felt like my world came crashing down because I just did not understand why it had happened to me, why I was going through it or you know, even before I could realize what endometriosis is, seeing the look on my family doctor's face um, was more than enough to let me know that there's something really wrong. And forever now, I've always known to have a very strong personality. People see me as someone who's very strong headed, and um, you know who can deal with things because I have dealt with things that normally people don't deal with like losing my mother and stuff like that so I've always had to maintain that image of being extremely strong so when this happened as much as I was, as I was devastated I don't think I let people really see what I was actually going through in terms of my mental health because again I was like oh you know I can't I just cannot show that weak side you know because that's the image I carry I carry the image of um, being extremely physically and mentally strong because physically because I, I have like really high pain tolerance and mentally because that's how it is so I remember it, it almost took me a year to even accept um, the diagnosis, uh, to even accept that I had something that is chronic, something that cannot be cured and something that probably won't go away. And added to this was another fact that I was constantly reminded of the fact that I wouldn't be able to conceive. And that for me was one of the most painful um experiences because i don't know for as long as i can remember i've always wanted to be a mother that's that is who i feel like i am right uh, to be a mother i've had my uh, kids names picked up from years for god knows how many years and um and to constantly keep hearing people say um, that, you know, oh, you might not be able to have kids or you have a very low chance. I was given less than 7% chance of conceiving. That is even if I tried IVF and all these fertility treatments. And it would be really sad because whenever I shared to someone about endometriosis or about the pain I was going through, they would not be really concerned about the pain, but they would always be like, oh, so does that mean you can't have a child? 
that was the first thing that bothered them and that would really like bring back a lot of um not so good feelings for me because that also reminded me again and again that okay I'm, i might not be able to have a child i might not be able to conceive i might not be able to ever experience the the um joy of motherhood now don't get me wrong i know for a lot of people this is not um what they want but this was something that i've always wanted so for me it was devastating for me it was very difficult of course for my family it was and they didn't really care about this much because um um for them just to see me in pain was enough they just wanted me to get rid of the pain they wanted me to become comfortable they wanted me to not be in pain and that's the only thing my brothers focused on they really didn't care about me not being able to conceive or me not being able to bear a child or will she get married because you know that's a big big block when it comes to getting married and uh, they weren't concerned i was um and um to my surprise a lot of people around me were and this really affected my mental health so the concealer palette was right in front of me but it took me about 15 minutes to find it it was right in front i'm not even kidding right in front yeah so where was i so that really pulled me down mentally i was just not doing well mentally at all like physically i was already extremely low but mentally i was in a very dark place because i would every time i open instagram i would see girls enjoying and going on trips and having fun and having you know the time of their life and i was there on bed unable to move or even turn or uh, something as simple as peeing had become so difficult for me something as simple as getting up and taking a walk had become so difficult for me i almost felt very very dependent on um my family as much as i was able to share it online i don't think i was ever strong enough to share um all the dark thoughts that i was experiencing at that moment and um so that went on for about a year because it took me a year to accept the fact that my body had done something or gone against me in a manner that i just did not understand my gosh the amount of concealer that i've been needing nowadays because of all the sleepless nights and all the stress is crazy so yeah it went on for a year almost and then um i slowly uh, started accepting it i i don't think i still fully have accepted the fact that you know something like that had happened but um as the pain got better as i tried alternative medicine and that is when i say alternative medicine i mean homeopathy um it really helped me um mentally also because the minute so when when this happened when i was in so much pain i had lost trust in myself and when i say i lost trust in myself what i mean is i could not be trusted to be left alone i had flare ups when i'm alone and i've needed someone and you know i've been in pain and all of that so that way i kind of lost trust in myself because i wasn't um capable of even going out on my own i wouldn't step out of the house on my own because i always had it in me that if something happened while i'm out if i'm in pain what would i do i wouldn't have anyone so you know i couldn't just depend on myself and as i was able to manage the symptoms i became more um free and i, I became more um trusting of myself again but throughout this time of healing process and of learning to do something on my own all over again uh, one thing that was constant was me crying alone at nights like i don't think anyone till now knows the amount of times i have spent nights crying because i know for a fact that 
I just went through one day which was so difficult and I went through all the pain and all the struggles and everything and I knew that I had to do it again all over again from the beginning the next day because um, I don't think anyone really understands what it means to wake up in pain um, unless you have gone through it because um, it is not a nice feeling. All of us sleep at night to be well rested in the morning but if you have to wake up in the morning and be in pain I think that is one of the most difficult things to experience and for me that was my life for almost two to three years where I would just wake up in pain constantly and I would be in pain constantly so um, almost for so many nights I have cried alone and the reason I cried alone is because I thought that the minute I show my weakness outside or I show the fact that this is bothering me I become weak I look weak and that was something that I was just not ready to show or even accept in front of anyone or um, you know except even to myself that I was actually feeling very weak and vulnerable and I could not handle it or I could not take it anymore but I was so stubborn my ego was so big that I was not ready to let anyone uh, see that side of me now of course in my head I thought that nobody had an idea of me having these breakdowns but recently when my brother and I had a talk uh, he told me about all the times they knew I was having a an emotional breakdown in the room or I was crying but they wouldn't talk to me about it because they knew that I wasn't ready to talk about it and that was really surprising for me because in my head I thought I was really good at hiding those feelings but clearly I did not I also had another problem was that if I was struggling through the night if I had pain through the night like unbearable pain through the night I wouldn't wake anyone up I would just go through it all alone at night until someone in the morning wakes up and then realizes that she's actually struggling like that is how stubborn I was when it came to showing my weak sides I just never wanted to show that side because I never ever wanted to look weak or look like I could not do it or I could not handle something on my own but now as an adult now as a 30 year old woman who is expecting her first child over the years things have changed and when I say over the years I would say maybe when Deepak came into my life because um, Deepak is a very um, Deepak is a guy who's very very in touch with his emotions he does not shy away from his emotions he does not uh, mask his emotions he is very good at expressing his emotions and when Deepak came into my life Deepak was going through a very difficult phase and he wanted someone strong by his side and fortunately for me now when i think of it i was that person and um, seeing deepak um be so strong even while he was at his um weakest emotionally made me realize that there is power in being vulnerable and there is power in being weak at times too because what are we trying to prove by constantly um, looking strong because with the right people around you uh, you can still be weak and still have strength while doing that like now you have you guys have no idea my first trimester was so difficult for me but the amount of crying that I did to my husband throughout this pregnancy is so ridiculous because few years back I would have never ever been able to do that 
cry to someone ask them that you know i like now i can literally look at my husband and be like i'm really sad like i need you can you come and you know sit with me for some time um i'm able to do that because i've learned that there is nothing wrong in being weak at times at least to your people to people who love you you don't have to be weak you don't have to show that weak side to everyone but at least to the people who love you who really genuinely care for you i think you it it's not wrong um to show that side because i remember even throughout my endometriosis the only person i would cry to and that was if i've just not been able to control my emotions was my third brother he was the only one who could bring out that side in me where i would start you know crying and being weak in front of him but otherwise i would not no matter what sometimes i would be with my friends and go through a pain level of maybe 9 or 10 and i would still not show it out i was that stubborn i was that um scared of showing out emotions so yeah so now i find it so much easier to be more vulnerable to people that love me and not act like i have everything um sorted out for me because i've also realized that sometimes we all need someone and of course i'm speaking on the lines of illness and all of that but if you are going through something you know difficult and you think that showing that weak side would make you look uh, like you don't have it together or you need someone constantly then please please change that um that thought process because we all need someone we all need um someone to be there for us like now you have no idea i i trouble deepak i mean of course i call it trouble he doesn't he's always there for me um no matter what i trouble deepak so much sometimes and i'm like i need you can you please come here and the amount of times i have just hugged him and cried because i wasn't able to handle um my pregnancy or i wasn't able to um handle the nausea is just so high because because now i think it is really strong for me to be able to depend on my husband uh, emotionally like that he really helps one he's helped me be in touch with my emotions a lot i've become this completely different person with him i'm a lot more um myself i don't have to put on this this thing of being strong or of um being someone who has everything together because i don't i absolutely don't have everything together but if you are going through something that you are unable to talk to or if you think you have no one to talk to about it please message deepak deepak has been literally talking to so many of my subscribers lately because he's able to i'm not at the moment i'm not able to like even if i have to talk continuously i get really um my shortness of breath is too much so even if i'm not there you can always call or message deepak deepak is always there he always responds to everyone but if you do have people who really care for you then please please don't shy away from showing that side i think we all need to have someone we can depend on we can rely on and it's very important i did that for years and now when i look back i'm like why did i even do it i have such loving people around me why did i find the need to stay so strong constantly and act like i had everything together when i when in reality i did not have anything together
I think my the minute I walk out, my husband's going to be in shock because he's never seen me with bright eyeshadows ever, like ever. Oh, mm -mm -mm. I'm so lost with what I have and what I don't have because it's been a while since I used makeup, proper makeup, makeup. So yeah, don't ever think that you have to go through something alone. Don't ever think that you have to deal with something alone because people think you are strong or you have a strong personality. Wow, this highlighter is like... That you have to stay strong because you have a strong personality and it is expected of you. I'm sure a lot of people thought that, oh, like, I've heard people saying, I don't know how you handle it. I don't know how you manage it. And in my head, I'm always like, you guys have no idea. The number of times I've wanted to give up on everything because I didn't think I could take it anymore was just so high. Okay, let me just put my eyeliner and be back. So yeah, that's what I wanted to actually talk to you guys because I know for a fact that there are many people out there who think that who think that being weak or vulnerable is not a choice it is definitely a choice i'm not saying you have to be weak or vulnerable in front of everyone but at least to the people who genuinely care and love for you i think you can definitely be yourself and that way it brings down so much of baggage or so much of heaviness that you are carrying in your heart because of any issue share it with someone it's very very important and about my eyeliner, I just, I still am not a winged eyeliner girl. I don't know what it is. The other day I tried to put wing eyeliner and try and be comfortable and confident with it. I just absolutely hated it and I went and removed the liner. I don't know if I should go a little more lighter with my lip or if this is fine. I'm guessing this is fine. You guys can let me know. I've actually stopped using um, setting spray because I don't know just the fact that I'm going to inhale it now during pregnancy doesn't seem right. Uh, I know about lipstick also a lot of people have said that you know you're going to um, swallow it and stuff like that. I don't usually have the habit of licking my lips. So I don't see that as a problem. But um, I'm in my last trimester and I'm trying to enjoy it and trying to be confident. So that's about it. I'm just enjoying it. Um, I hope you took something from this video. This wasn't like a makeup tutorial or anything. I just wanted to talk to you guys about this. But uh, yeah, I hope you got something out of this and um, if you did then please like and subscribe and like I said if you are going through something that you cannot talk about to anyone, Deepak's DMs are always open. Um, it's really crazy the kind of things you girls have been going through, it really makes me sad but I'm glad that in some way or the other Deepak and I have been able to help. Um, you guys but uh, yeah don't worry it's all discreet nobody is going to know anything about it nobody is going to hear about it but yeah also i feel like my fingers are swelling because 
my ring my wedding band and my engagement ring is just becoming too tight hashtag pregnant life i will meet you guys in my next video also yeah um i am doing vlogmas this year and i think it will be better than every other year because deepak is going to help me with it and he's really excited and i'm excited too we've planned a lot of things and um yeah, so stay tuned for that and I will meet you guys in my next video. Until then, bye!